So now let's focus on the most common type of salt which we all use. Okay, that is the common salt or sodium chloride. So salt formed by hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is sodium chloride, NaCl. This is the common salt you can see in this picture. Okay. It is known as common salt, the one used in our food items. So the basic salt, we studied about so many salts in some other video, but this is the salt which is commonly used in our households. Okay. Sodium chloride is actually separated from the varied salts available in seas. So if you go to a coastline, if it's nearby to your house or uh, at any point if you have been to such a place, you will see that there will be heaps of such salt. Okay, you can see the heaps like this. Okay, and more such. Okay, in this picture you can see a few, but more such heaps of salt. And from that sodium chloride, the edible salt we all eat in our daily food items that is separated out. Okay, because we know that uh, sea water is salty. Okay, it's not like normal water. So there are different kinds of salt, but all are not edible. So sodium chloride has to be separated out from that lot. Now, deposits of salts which are brownish in color due to impurities found all around. Okay, there are few deposits. You can see this is not like the normal white salt we use. So they are a little brownish. You can see the brownish tinge. Okay, so what are they called? They are called rock salt. Okay, because beds of which were formed with seas drying up. So when seas dried up, beds of them were formed and which is why they are known as rock salt. And they will be little brownish in color. You can see the texture, the color. Okay. Now coming back to our common salt, uh, it actually has a very big significance in our freedom struggle. Okay, so the common salt was an integral part of our freedom struggle in the Dandi March and Salt Satyagraha led by Mahatma Gandhi. So basically, uh, this is another very important incident. You may learn that in history, but Gandhiji's freedom struggle, Salt Satyagraha and Dandi March actually played a very integral role. Okay, they actually pledged to not have salt because salt is a very common thing in our food items. So this march was actually significant and it had the significance that we will not eat salt until we get freedom. So basically common salt, which is a very common item in our any kind of food we eat. So that actually has a very big significance in our freedom struggle. So now question for you, who led the Dandi March in which common salt played an integral part? Okay, so option A, we have Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Option B, we have Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose. And option C, we have Mahatma Gandhi. The correct answer is, as we discussed, the salt satyagraha or the Dandi march was led by Mahatma Gandhi. So that is the correct answer, option C. Now let's move on to the next slide. So common salt is a raw material for many chemicals. So it's not like that common salt we are using, uh, just eating it, uh, using it to actually have some taste in our food. It's not that. Through that, a variety of things of daily requirements can also be made. First of all, we have sodium hydroxide. That is not uh, maybe a thing of daily requirement, but sodium hydroxide can be made. Baking soda, we know, can be made. Then we have washing soda, the detergent that can be made. And also the bleaching powder. So various things of daily use can be made through common salt, that is NaCl, sodium chloride. You may not think that it's common salt in that sense. Just think of the chemical formula. It has sodium, it has chloride. So it can definitely be used in various forms to actually manufacture different sort of products. And we'll see how these products are manufactured, what are the uses and all that. So first of all, see this process. So this is basically a structure and uh, this actually has the aqueous solution of sodium chloride. Okay, I will uh, just like after this video, we'll shift to a better representation of this, a very better pictorial uh, representation. And this process is known as chloralkali process. Okay, electrolysis of brine. What is brine? That is the aqueous solution of sodium chloride. NaCl, that is the common salt we were talking about. 
So this is a very uh, exhaustive process. You don't need to remember everything. But basically in this process, brine, electrolysis, we discussed electrolysis of water. In this, what happens? It's decomposing into its constituents, right? The sodium and chloride. It's actually decomposing into its main primary constituents. That's happening in this electrolysis of brine. And also one more very important thing you need to remember. Why is it chlor and alkali? I will actually show you the equation, then you will understand better. Okay, so let me show you that. So, you can see 2 NaCl aqueous, that is uh, added with 2 H2O, that is liquid. It's giving us 2 NaOH plus Cl2 plus H2. So, chlorine, hydrogen and NaOH, that is sodium hydroxide. So, now, chlor, the first term is chlor, that means chlorine. So, you can see chlorine is being manufactured. Okay. And sodium hydroxide, we all know, is an alkali. So, chlor and alkali, both the things are present in the resultant. You can see sodium chloride and water, when you are adding, it's actually giving us, after the electrolysis happening, it's giving us an alkali and chlorine. So, chlor alkali is the process, okay? Which is why the name is chlor alkali, okay? This process is a crucial industrial method of producing chlorine and sodium hydroxide which are essential chemicals for various applications. So we discussed sodium hydroxide and chlorine, they are very essential for making a variety of things and this process is very much important in that sense. So now chlorine, we talked about chlorine, now you are adding it with something else. What is it? We are adding it with dry slaked lime. So then what is happening? What are we getting? Chlorine gas reacts with calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. So lime when we uh, uh, take lime or any product per se, anything you take, you must focus on the chemical formula of it. So here lime, dry slaked lime, the formula is CaOH2 that is calcium hydroxide and CaOH2 plus Cl2 is giving us CaOCl2 plus H2 that is the bleaching powder. We use bleaching powder, you know what is bleaching powder, it's used in day-to-day -day, uh, works in our houses. So bleaching powder to clean, okay, it's manufactured from calcium hydroxide and chlorine gas when they come together, okay. So bleaching powder is being formed. Okay, so another thing, bleaching powder, it's not just used in your home. Another thing is that bleaches cotton and linen in the textile industry. So apart from home. It is also used in the textile industry to bleach cotton and linen. Then you have wood pulp in the paper industry and washed clothes in laundry. So bleach is, it has multifaceted uses. It's not just to clean in your house. It's actually used in the textile industry to make wood pulp in the paper industry and washing clothes in the laundry. So that is the use of bleach. Now. It's also used as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries. So when you think that the use of bleach is done, it's not done. It's also used in chemical industries, okay, as an oxidizing agent, okay. Also, it makes drinking water free of germs. So here is where we are actually ending the use of bleach. So it has multifaceted uses. I just initially started that, okay, it can be used for cleaning purposes, but no, it is actually useful in many chemical industries, wood pulp industry, and also the day-to-day -day water you drink. It is also used to clean the water, okay, purify the water, make it free of germs, okay. So these are the uses of bleaching powder. So let's summarize what we studied in this video. We focused on sodium chloride, right, the common salt. We discussed how common salt has been very important in our lives and also in the freedom struggle we discussed how it has hold some significance and also we discussed a little bit about rock salt but our primary importance was to see the products which can be manufactured from common salt or sodium chloride as a whole so we mainly discussed two products we discussed sodium hydroxide and we discussed that it can also make chlorine and we focused on the chlor alkali process through which basically sodium chloride actually decomposed into its constituents okay so we got sodium hydroxide we also got which is an alkali and we also got chlorine which is chlor so chlor alkali process that is how it's named 
then we also focused when sodium chloride comes with dry slicked lime that is calcium hydroxide it gives us bleaching powder and then we discussed the various uses of bleaching powder in various industries like wood pearl then textile then chemical industries and also finally how it can actually make your drinking water free of germs so these are the takeaways from this video